Hey guys, this is Rajiv from OptimizeStressExperts.com and today I will show you around Digital Access Pass, show you a bit, go, go a bit deep and show you how it works and how you can use it in your business. So this is not exactly, not exactly a tutorial, some sort of a review, but deep enough to show you how easy it is to work with. So this is the panel. Once uh, you have installed it, uh, you will click on digital access path and this is how it looks like. So this is the main panel where it shows you know how many products have been sold by whom etc and where the traffic is coming from as you can see here incoming traffic. So it shows you the user ID and the referrer etc and all the products here. So first things first let me show you how a product is defined in digital access pass. Compared to a wishlist member or compared to uh, optimized member. Let's look, I will talk to you about the other competitive products so that you can get an idea of you know which one to choose if you are in a you know if you're if you if you are if you are choosing between them. So um, for example in this particular case we have a product called effective speed reading. So when we create a product in uh, digital access pass we just go in and you know we can create a product either by just <clears throat> taking there are a couple of examples here subscription product or one one time product so all we do is just take any of these products and save as save as new and then we have the new product and then we just change the names so let's take for example the uh, effective speed reading product so essentially uh, if you look at the product what is a product in in terms of uh, you know when you sell it so you sell when you sell a product or you sell what a course a course constitutes of modules or it can be you know modules or it can be just pages or lessons right and a product can should have a price should have content and a name right that's the minimal um, that's the minimum that you need to define a product so product name is here then you have the pricing, so you add the pricing. So here, for example, it might be, so will it be recurring? No, it's a one-time product, so it's gonna be 99 pounds, for instance. And this is the notification. So here, this is the notification that goes out in each, uh, every time somebody buys, they get this email. So you can modify that and just, you know, customize it to whatever to your liking. But in essence, it sells, it sends the username it takes the, the email address as the username and the password. So as you can see on the left, you have the tags here. So you can just, you know, copy and paste that here. I say there was nothing. I would then, let me just create a new product. So a new notification email. So hi, hi, something like what, first name. So hi, first name. Yeah. Thanks, so basically, yeah, thanks for purchasing. Product name, so uh, there's no product name here. So you could just write it, you know, product name. And then you put here are your login details. So URL would be, uh, we'll just take this and put, for example, it could be login and then the username and the password. You get the idea, so then you would say thank you. Right, now something very important, you see this third party notification email. So say for example on Aweber or I don't know, MailChimp or whatever other program that you, you have, you want to create a buyer's list. If you are on Aweber for instance, I know it's very easy, you just put list name at aweber.com. That's it. And then it builds a buyer's list. Of course, you need to put the automation in Aweber to tell, to tell Aweber to remove it from the free list if you have one. And uh, you know, as soon as people are added on the buyer's list, they get removed from the other list. That's another story. But you, you get what I'm saying. So the, this it's as easy as just putting the list name here to be able to uh, put to, to be able to build your buyers list. So then you have the content responder. So this is 
where it becomes very easy in digital access pass to add pages to a product. So <clears throat> what you see here on the left are all the pages that you have on the on this site. And then you just need to select the product that you want. Say, say for example here, you know, speed reading, you select five pages at a time, you just push it on the right and you will have it protected. So everything that is protected under this particular product name is relevant. So members who buy this product will only see these, uh, these URLs, if you see what I mean. Right, so everything under speed reading is under, everything under, yeah, under speed reading here. So you would take everything that is under speed reading on the left and put it on the right. Say for example, this one, I'm not seeing it here, but it's probably already there. It's probably already on the right. So just by um, browsing and selecting the page and pushing it on the right, you assign that particular page to a product. Now, if you compare the same thing to wishlist or optimized member, you need to go in each individual page and open them and assign them to a particular to a particular product level, right? So in optimized press, the problem in optimized member is that you can only assign it to one level. In wishlist, you can assign it to multiple levels, but the problem again is that you need to go in each individual page, so it's a pain, right? So that's a very very good thing when it comes to management uh, in product management in uh, digital access pass. Now autoresponders, you can um, use that if you want. For example, you know, if you drip in content or you're sending, you can set up autoresponders that go, go out, I don't know, every day, whatever, right? I generally don't use that. I would use like Aweber or any software, but if you don't have one, you can still use this. Okay, so here you've got, uh, you can uh, add, like if somebody cancels, what, which page do they see? And if uh, they cancel, they are been they are removed from the product, etc. Straightforward stuff. Now here is how you generate buttons. You just need to go through it, and it will generate a button for you. So, so in this particular case, for instance, of course, if you want to generate the product, you want to generate a button, you need to configure I don't know PayPal or Stripe or whatever authorized.net, whatever payment gateway uh, you want to use. So in this particular case, for instance, I'll show you how easy it is to generate um, to generate a button. So as you can see, um, you can the button here would either be subscription, add to cart, or buy now. If it's a one-time product, obviously it's not going to be a subscription product. And then you just click on generate payment link, and that's the link. So you go and just stick that on your sales page, that's it. Okay, let's just test it for you. Now, if you are selling something in GBP, just change this in GBP and... So here you go, I haven't saved it, that's why it's just not showing 99 pounds, but yeah, uh, it's showing dollars and I just changed it into GBP. And we'll probably get GBP here. It's taking a bit. Okay, so uh, the next thing, we'll look at it in a bit. So, so I've showed you all the attributes that uh, how how to you know to create a product and and uh, give it all. All its attributes. Now, uh, from a user perspective, how to manage users? You would go to users here. Say, for example, you wanted to manage a, an existing user, or just add or remove a user from a product. It's very simple. So you would go to users. Say, for example, you want to add a user to a particular product. You would just go to this page and select whichever product that you want to add. Add the first name and then add add a email address that's it you can mark it as paid for accounting purposes and then just add to product and it's done the user will get a uh, username and password will get that notification email in their yeah in their mailbox and then if you want to manage existing users like for example you want to you want to 
reset their IP addresses, sorry, reset their passwords and flush their login records, etc. sometimes because people will get blocked. Like Digital Access Pass will automatically block people who have got more than, who have logged in from more than five different IP addresses, which is a good you know, security thing. You can configure that tier in setup configurations. So here, you know, in, when you go in Digital Access Pass setup configurations, you'll see all the basic settings here, like which payment gateway you want to use for PayPal. You have to set up all these stuff. And um, yeah, so, you know, general stuff. Now, um, the affiliate module, um, like you can see, you can customize, you can say how long you want the affiliate cookie to be present, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, what I'm showing you here is how easy it is. So most, what I've showed you here is um, the what you would usually use. Like you've got other, you know, like email broadcast and stuff. Not really important because most of the time you would use something like Aweber or Mailchimp. Uh, if you want to use the affiliate system here, it's very, very easy. Say, for example, I'll show you how you can just add a commission uh, to a product. So basically, you just add a new record. You choose the product that you want to you want to uh, add the commission for, and then you just say, okay, percentage, per sale, percentage. So whatever, you know, fifty percent commission. You just say add, and it's done. And then you can add tier one or tier two. So um, yeah, that's that's it for you know creating um, the affiliate module is is not it's not a big deal. Um, of course, there's uh, some you know some some documentation you need to go through to have to be able to do it. But once you you've set it up, it's very easy to manage. What else should I show you? So payment orders set up. Yeah, so that's it. You know, that's an overall overview of a digital access pass and how it works. If you've got any questions, feel free to just ping me an email or get in touch with me on optimizepressexperts.com. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.